Hi guys and welcome to Tech Ferb. Uh, today it is absolutely pouring down rain outside, but that's okay. Uh, I am inside, I am completely dry, and we are doing a classic build, so let's get into it. Okay, so classic build, what does that entail? Well, uh, it entails around about 10 years ago, uh, and this is actually quite depressing for me because 10 years ago, uh, what is now classic, was when I first got into computers. So that's not depressing at all, but anyway, Parts were sporting, so it's a return of the Q6600. Uh, that CPU just seems to be completely and utterly relevant in so many cases. Uh, again, it pops up in this video because it was relevant in uh, 2007 and 2008, around that time when the Radeon HD 4870 was a thing. So the graphics card here, uh, that is the aforementioned uh, HD 4870, and that is a 512 megabyte graphics card. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, a 0.5 gig graphics card. Jokes aside, this was pretty much barring a top of the line Nvidia card and one AMD card. This was pretty much cream of the crop, so it was near the top end for that time. And I had the card lying around. I thought it was dead. I, I just decided one day that I might try it in uh, a Core 2 board, and it turned out it worked perfectly. So uh, I thought, hey, why not make a video on um, a computer from the late 2000s? So I decided to do a classic build. Now. Uh, where I want to go with this, well, we're going to do some benchmarks on it, and I also did some performance tests, and I think there seems to be a lot of people that want to build classic computers, so when I, when I say that, they want to say, let's play them, let's say they want to play Fallout 3, which was released in around 2006, 2007, around that time, and instead of just running it on modern hardware and a modern operating system, they would rather go and run it on old hardware that it was designed to run on with the operating system it was designed to run on. So that's what the point of this build is. I want to kind of examine uh, what the performance is like and also kind of, is it worthwhile getting old parts, building a computer just to run these older games or should you just uh, forget that dream and, and <laughs> realize that it's actually a nightmare and, and just use a modern PC to do what you want to do. So with that in mind, uh, I should run over the specs. Uh, so we have the old, now it's an old ASUS board. I know it's a P965 uh, chipset. Now that's really, this is pre-me, so I, I don't actually know that um, generation of hardware quite well. That's just a fraction before when I got into IT. I got into IT the generation after this chipset. Uh, the processor I know quite well, it's quad core, uh, was pretty much the first mainstream quad core. I've overclocked it to three, three gigahertz. And I've got the H60 Corsair water cooler sitting on it just purely because it's on the test bench and it's just easier to slap that on than rather try and track down a cooler to make this make it work with this CPU. Uh, otherwise, ignoring the cooler and the motherboard and the CPU, uh, power supply is my standard test bench, uh, 750 watt thermal take, V2 light power, uh, HD 4870, 512 meg as as mentioned before, it is actually a uh, HIS card, I believe, um, but I'm fairly sure that it's just a reference uh, HD4870. Uh, I was sporting, now I, I kind of bent the rules a little bit. I was actually sporting six gig of RAM. Uh, I could have ran four, but I just kind of found that it's really like uh, the OS I ran was Windows 7, and it just makes that, just that difference having that extra two gig of RAM over the stock four gig, which was pretty standard back then. Um, six gig was considered high end back then. People did have it. Uh, I remember having six gig in my, uh, I had six gig in my computer in 2009, the very start of that year, um, but that was incredibly high end for the time. So, um, that's the RAM and hard drive was just a one terabyte from, uh, I want to say early 2010s, uh, but it, it's still a mechanical hard drive. It performs pretty much the same as any mechanical hard drive from the last 10 years. They haven't really improved much in that time frame. So that's the parts. Uh, why don't we jump into some benchmarks and then I can run over kind of what it's like uh, running with this experience. Okay, so uh, I managed to run five benchmarks. I tried to run a couple more. Uh, so first one was Borderlands 2 and I managed to get it to run at 1080p on low settings. So this game is from 2012 
It's not super demanding. It does tend to run on pretty much anything. Uh, and it ran pretty well. So as you can see here, it averaged 57 frame per, frames per second, which is quite good considering the age of the system. Uh, it, its 1% lows were 27, uh, 27 frames per second and 0.1% were 19. Uh, I must note that it did very occasionally stutter, but to be honest, this game was absolutely fantastic and it felt quite fluid on uh, this GPU. Next game I got to run was Crisis, and amazingly I got this to run at 1080p low. Now this is the original Crisis, this was from the time that this game was released. So I do recall when this game came out, and if you tried to run it on high or, or any demanding settings, it just absolutely crushed any GPU. Uh, but on low settings, as can be seen here, we saw an average of 68 frames per second, 1% uh, low of 43, and a 0.1% of 26. Uh, and overall it ran quite well on this hardware, and, you know, it's it, it's really not a bad GPU so far. Ah, one of my old favourites, Fallout 3. Uh, this ran pretty much 1080p high, we couldn't run it at ultra, it did stutter a little, but 1080p high, uh, no problems, 59 frames per second average, uh, and as a reminder, this game engine, game engine caps out at 60 frames per second, so that's pretty much hitting the limiter. 1% uh, lows of 38 frames per second and 0.1% of 18. Again, this game was pretty clean and maybe started once or twice, but you know what? It's a pretty good game and it runs really well on this hardware. And again, Fallout 3 is from the era that this graphics card was made, so I'd expect it to run quite well. Skyrim, another favourite from around this era. This was actually a little bit after, released a little bit after when this GPU was released, but it runs on the same game engine as Fallout New Vegas, so little bit more demanding than Fallout 3, but only f marginally. Uh, and as you can see, average frames per second, again, 60 frames per second cap on this engine, and it gets 57 frames per second, so it runs quite well. Uh, this was at 1080p medium, I couldn't run it any higher than that, it started to stutter if I went any higher. But again, at these settings, this graphics card handles this game quite well. South Park Stick of Truth, now this is an odd choice, uh, and I myself was kind of curious, I wanted to know, uh, South Park Sick of Truth, relatively modern game, only released a couple of years ago, I wanted to know if, hey, this old graphics card, can it run these newer titles that are not demanding? And it turns out that, yeah, it can. Uh, it has a game engine cap of 30 frames per second, 1% uh, <laughs> lows of 26 frames per second, and 0.1% and lows of 12. It didn't really start out, this game ran absolutely fantastic, it's a lot of fun. And it's good to see that this old hardware can actually still run titles that were made well after its use-by date. So uh, that's good news for the HD 4870. Now, uh, the one kicker, here's the thing that kind of let down the... I guess it kind of let the GPU down. So I tried to run a couple of other games. I tried to run Battlefield 3. Uh, that game would not launch. I think it is to do with the software, not the hardware. Uh, there was a lot of forum posts uh, of Battlefield 3. It doesn't launch on some machines for whatever reason. It's just buggy software, and EA never bothered to fix it. Uh, having said that, I decided that I'd give Fallout, uh, ba sorry, Battlefield 4 a, a try. And you go through maybe the first 30 seconds of the first mission, no problem, we're running okay. And then all of a sudden it uh, runs out of VRAM and the game hard locks and you have to quit and start again. So... No Battlefield 4 benchmark, I'm very sorry, uh, no resolution would fix that, and no low settings would fix that either, so it's just too new of a game, too demanding of a game for that GPU. Uh, I also tried GTA 5, and GTA 5 pretty much just told me to get stuff, this graphics card's too old, I'm not even going to launch. Um, and yeah, that was the extent of the benchmarking. Now, uh, let's flick back over to me, and go from there. Okay guys, so as in the benchmarks, you can see that anything that was a bit older, around 2013 backwards, ran quite well on this system. Uh, and that's on the gaming side. Now, I didn't really have a way of benchmarking any applications or OSs or anything. So, uh, focusing on the experience of using this older platform uh, in like today, uh, it's not fantastic. Uh, so, a lot of small little things I had to deal with. Uh, so. For example, on this, uh, on the motherboard, which you can't see on camera, uh, you'll notice that it has six gig uh, installed, in the, and that's that's what I had in the spec sheet. Now, the reason it had six gig is because one of the dim slots has failed. So it doesn't matter what stick of RAM you put in it, uh, it will refuse to boot with that 
uh, slot populated. So it's only got three working dim slots. Uh, other idiosyncrasies, like a, you got a dead CMOS chip, so it doesn't remember any settings that you're programming to it. So you gotta manually change it every time you uh, lose power to the device. Um, so it, there's just little things that are frustrating from a hardware level. And then you've got software. So uh, very slow to install Windows 7, uh, very slow to install any applications. Uh, you cannot multitask on this CPU. It's, it's far too old for that now. Uh, I was able to open the full suite of uh, Creative Cloud. So that's Premiere, that's Illustrator, that's Photoshop. Uh, I didn't even dare open After Effects because that would just break the computer, I know that much. Um, but it, it handled all the day-to-day -day stuff. It was just very slow, very clunky. Uh, partially because it is running a hard drive and partially because it's just an old main board and an old CPU and it's just an old system. So I have enjoyed the project overall. Uh, it was fun putting together an old system to run some old games on it. And if I could afford to lose this power supply uh, to run the system 24 seven, I'd absolutely do it. Um, it's been an enjoyable experience. Uh, if I was gonna spend money on this, because this is kind of a collection of old parts that I've had lying around, uh, I would look at trying to get a board that's in good condition. You need a really good motherboard that's got everything working on it. So it's worth spending the extra cash on that. Uh, in terms of CPU, anything that's a quad core, do not get a dual core. Um, it's just, as soon as you have to do anything outside of those sort of old school applications, you're gonna regret it. So make sure you have that quad core there. It just makes it that bit more tolerable. Um, oodles of RAM, as much RAM as you can put in there. Um, but yeah, otherwise, uh, on the graphics card side, the HD 4870, this card absolutely shocked me. Now, I came into this fully expecting it to run things like Fallout 3 and, and the games that were from its era, but I had no expectation of being able to run Borderlands 2. I did not expect it to run South Park. Uh, I wasn't surprised when Battlefield 4 crashed, but I was amazed that it launched and actually opened the game. Um, so yeah, overall, uh, I think this age of system is quite good as for a, for a retro build or, or a classic build per se. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all I've got on this one, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, leave a like if you liked it, leave a dislike if you disliked it. Uh, comments down below if you've got anything to say. Uh, tech for Forum, uh, don't forget guys, if you haven't signed up for that and you wanna get in touch with me, ask me questions, that sort of stuff, uh, head over to the forums. I'll have a link uh, down below and also have it somewhere in the video around here, around me. Uh, and of course, get subscribed if you want more content like this. And thanks for watching guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.